Yeah, that's your boy Retro. Flying down to a Mach 1 down Centennial Parkway in the silver bullet on a police speed camera. I'll be honest with you guys. $80 with the surcharge for going 62 and a 50. I'm not a big fan of that. At least it doesn't go against my insurance. Because it wasn't me driving the car, it was my buddy. This episode of Crack It with Retro Collectibles is sponsored by and in association with the Taui Diecast Museum. Killing the value on collectibles since 2019. Retro Maniacs, how y'all doing? You know who it is. It's the dildo that got an $80 fine after surcharges for doing 62 and a 50 from one of those stupid cameras that don't have any discretion. How's it going? We're going into Easter weekend. Just a reminder, guys, usually Ontario Diecast Static Show is Sunday. This time it's Saturday because of the holiday. I'm going to help Glenn, and you know I'm going to bring you guys along. So... Um, purpose of this video. So, you remember before I unboxed this, and I did not expect a lot when I unboxed this. Uh, by a company called Road Legends. Okay? Um, the box, I like the box because it's got the window on the back, but it does look like an old style box. Like I was expecting, you know, kind of maybe a little bit of a crappy die cast car, to be honest. But I was so impressed by the quality of this that I'm going to be hunting the exact same car down to make myself a Bumblebee from Transformers. And it's going to be a real easy project. I'm just going to get the Autobots logo and the uh, decal and just boop. But I was so impressed with the quality that I'm going to be getting one. Now, that being said, during that video, I made comments about a certain car that they made. It was a yellow Barracuda 383. And I said, oh, that's a piece of crap. It looks like crap. The rims look like crap. After the video, I thought about it. And I felt bad and I felt guilty. Because I said, you know what? I give honest reviews to these guys. If something sucks, I'll tell them it sucks. I don't care where it's from. If something's good, I'll say it's good. I just gave them a review about a car that I didn't even unbox or see in person. I seen that in pictures. And that's after I unboxed the Beetle and was surprised by that. So thinking about it, I was like, I don't feel good about that because what happens if even one viewer was thinking about getting that car and now they're not gonna get it because I said it sucks and I don't know if it sucks. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unbox it. And then I'll tell you if it sucks or not. Then I'll have the educated decision. You know what I can tell you guys? It's the box is a lot heavier than I expected. I can tell you that. And I seen this in two different colors. Uh, this color and there's also like a forest green with a white stripe. Uh, the forest green with the white stripe, when I seen it, the door was way out of alignment because the stripe was all uh, screwed up. So I didn't have a very good experience. Plus, those rims I thought looked like crap. But I actually did some research. Um, I couldn't find any pictures of this actual car because I was looking for the same exact car because... What I like about this, what makes it different, is it's a Barracuda. It's not a souped-up Hemi Cuda with fancy tires and a hood scoop and all that. It looks like a grocery getter. Um, so I was looking up stock Barracuda 383, 1969, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't find any of this exact color. But you know what I did find? 
MPC made a model. I'll see if I can get a picture of it by the end of the video to show you guys. MPC made a model kit. And it's back this car identical right down to the rims. So it makes me think that it was a real car. Um, okay, so what I, what I learned about this model as well. So this looks like it was done by a company for a company by uh, Road Legends. Company's called Driven Performance. Blue Streak. Um... No, wait, no, driven performance. Yeah, okay, so this is how you grade them is these three things right here. Um, so the basic model would be standard. The kind of middle, uh, middle guy would be blue streak drive-in performance. And then the top one is blue streak, I'm guessing. And that's what this guy is, is a blue streak. So they have different quality scales for the road legends. I didn't know that. Now this, the reason I think it was made for company two is because the box is very similar with the same plastic, everything, same shape. But this just has 118 collection, Road Legends. And this also mentions Yat Ming on the box. This one doesn't. Uh, but very similar box, you know it's from the same company. But I want to give this a really good going over, guys, because I actually, after doing that video, I know I joke around a lot, but I felt bad because I thought a lot of those guys make decisions based on me showing them stuff. And what happens if I just screwed them out of buying it? And it's a good mind. This is heavy as heck. Okay, the steering steer is very nice. Very, very nice. Like, not nice like the, um, that Mustang we just did. The high-end, uh, exact detail replicas one. But it's still very nice. Um, show you some details before we take it off the base. I like that they put a nameplate on here. And with, uh, usually, like with the Beetle, they just put the year of the car and everything, and they didn't put the company name or anything, and I really like that. Like, Maisto will do a nameplate of the car, but then it'll say Maisto or whatever, right? Uh, this one does say Blue Streak on it. Uh, but it just mentions everything else. Nice looking base. Okay, so... I'll show you some of these details. We'll start with the trunk. Trunk does not open, okay? Actually, we'll go around the car before I start opening stuff. Uh, details on the front grille are better than I expected with the orange uh, marker lights and stuff like that. I'm more impressed looking at it in my hand than I was looking at it in pictures. And that's why I wanted to do this little 383 right there. Actually, what am I doing? I gotta get on some glubbies since we're doing this. And you know what guys, we started without the light. I was just gonna talk to you about the model cause I'm waiting for the light to charge. I'm gonna go get the light now. So give me a second, the battery should be charged much better so yeah i was okay not having the light when i was sitting here kind of yakking with you guys but i want the light when we're looking over the car that way you guys have it all lit up nice and that is bright when it's when the batteries are somewhat charged wow and i just noticed the last video wasn't uh too bright so i'm gonna get some batteries with a little bit better that can store more energy and last longer. Because these are the Dollarama ones. Because these are double A's that this light takes. So I like it the way it sits. Uh, we're going to check out underneath the hood last. You know how we do it. We save the best for last. Now, so far so good. It's got the chrome here for the door handle. If you remember, my Motor Max American Graffiti did not have that. And by the way, guys, when I remember, probably tonight after the video, 
I found chrome paint pens on AliExpress. And when you do it, it's not silver. It actually dries and looks like chrome because I've read a bunch of reviews and seen a bunch of pictures. And people said, yeah, it actually dries chrome. So imagine how easy that'll be. Just reach in with like a marker and go boop and it's chrome, right? Because a lot of cars, if they don't come with the door handle, I want to put it on. This makes it look better. This one has it though which is a good sign. Uh, seats move forward and backwards. Another nice little detail. Uh, door handles are chrome separate molding. Uh, like it's actual separate pieces. It's not just, doesn't just look like molded paint, like a molded piece of poop. Some of them aren't even painted a different color. Like it would just be a mound of yellow. That looks horrible, but that looks good. Can't really see too much of it, so we'll have to look under different lighting conditions on the look-see set. But so far, so good. Now, I was complaining, what I didn't like about the car at first was these rims, hubcaps, whatever they are, but those are legit Barracuda hubcaps. They came on that MPC model. I'm gonna show you that model, actually, before we go to the look-see set. Just have to remind me. Back of it looks good. Now here comes the moment of truth, guys. The hood opens. At first I wasn't positive if it did. I was gonna say if the hood doesn't open, that's bad. But now, not horrible, but not great. Kind of reminds me of Maisto. Maybe Maisto is just a step up from this the same or maybe Maisto is a fraction more better in the engine compartment. But so far, um, the, the quality guys like uh, is excellent. Like the way the doors open, the hood opens, like anything that opens, it's excellent quality. It doesn't feel loose, like it's gonna break even the tires. So the build quality itself is excellent and it's heavy. So this is just, we're more or less looking for details now. So we're gonna take it off this base. That way we can give it its day in court, like we always do. Gotta give it a day in court. It's not fair, you can't just convict somebody in absentia. Come on. In case anybody's wondering, I've had a couple people ask me about the music on my reels. And because, you know, music's copyrighted, right? How do I get away with music? Well, a lot of my music is actually my friends. Like, for example, the rap music I have, it sounds like legit rap songs, but it's actually a lot of those are my friend Will performing those. Uh, he lives out of town and then I dubbed them in the background. Just teasing, just teasing Will. I was gonna say Gwen, but I figured I'd say Will. Okay, taking her off of this base. So yeah, guys, Ontario Diecast Addicts show this Saturday at Knights of Columbus, Easter weekend, 2024. Um, now it's March 28th, so it'll be March 30th, I believe. We'll be at yeah, March 30th. 2024 hope to see you there and if you watch my videos come say hello if you know who i am i love when people do that i've even taken some ussies with people i've had people come up to me at the what what show was it woodstock toy show i think it was woodstock i took ussies with people and there was another toy show i took an ussie with a vendor a selfie he wanted it I was walking by and he said, happy hunting, I watch your videos. I was wild, that's the, that's the first time I was recognized. Better recognize. Hey guys, better recognize. Okay, so. Yeah, that's about it. We're gonna show you guys underneath. Now that back window, imagine having one of these real cars and having to replace that back window with the slight concave in it. 
That's probably a friggin' cost you 20 grand for the window. Well, not that much, but it wouldn't sure wouldn't be cheap. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I think we should go up to look see set. One more thing to show you guys. Underneath the car, I've seen worse, actually. I have seen worse. So I feel bad for telling you guys not to bother with this because it looks like a stock Cuda. I thought the wheels looked like crap in all the pictures I've seen, but it looks like stock 383 Barracuda wheels. And I was telling Glenn, like, the way, the, how nice the doors and everything are and everything lines up and opens in that. Um, companies, like, I believe it's GMP or Acme sell wheel kits for cars. Like, I was looking to buy a set of Craggers for my Blue Maestro, you know, the Dennis... Uh, Dennis Gilder, Blue Charger from Christine, Arnie's buddy Dennis. I was trying to locate a pair of Kregers, and they had a pair, but they were all sold out, but they were identical. They would have looked great if I could have got a pair. But uh, picture do it, put, putting a crazy set of wheels on this. Because, yeah, the bones are there. It's got good quality, and it's... Like I said, well put together. But I think we should go up to the look-see set. I'm starting to verbal diarrhea, you guys. Because we went a day without a video because I screwed up and deleted videos. Sorry, guys. Anyway, let's get up to the look-see set. Gurgle first. Before we head to the look-see set, guys, just to give you an idea of the different uh, boxes and colors some of these companies put out cars in. The same car in a million different color boxes, but look at the car itself. There's that one that i seen. That's a nice one. I like the hood, the 383 on the hood. Check that out, guys. Highway 61 made one, although it's not the same color. But imagine that quality. Look at the rims. There's the MPC model kit, guys. Identical. So, fellas and ladies, I was definitely wrong telling you to steer clear of that. What it is, is I'm so used to unboxing cars with... Well, look at the stuff I've unboxed, guys. Roll down windows and stuff like that. Glove boxes that open. What this is, is it was a base model. It's not a Hemi Cuda with a 440. It's it's a base model Cuda. It's like what Glenn just said. Something a senior back in the day might have bought even. Uh, it's got a 383 in it. It's not super terrible. Like, it's still kind of sporty, you know. I like it. Um, but, yeah, I totally was looking at those pictures. Look, I was comparing apples with oranges, guys, is what I was doing. And you can get this car for a great deal. Just like the Beetle, um, the Beetle's really well done. I'm definitely getting that. The Beetle, I seen one for 50 bucks, I think, in Mississauga, mint in the box. I think I'm going to scoop it for 50 The tops I would pay for one of these. Uh, this car here, Canadian Funds, between 40 and 60 bucks. And I'd be happier at about 50, like right in the middle for one of these here. Um, because it's a base model car, but the quality's there. It's built really awesome. It's not, I, I was making fun of something I shouldn't have been making fun of. And I don't want you guys to form a judgment on the car because I was an idiot that day. So anyway, check her out. Okay, guys, one last thing before we get into this. I am actually going to retro score this car. And because it's not a sealed unit, it's going to be a regular uh, retro score grading. It's not going to be the new shelf burner grading for the uh, sealed units, just the display stuff. This is going to be just all around. How did they do? So let's get into it, guys. So here it is, guys. And I think I mentioned to you, you notice I have a cord running there. I left this thing on the other night and killed that expensive battery that cost me about 13 bucks. And I didn't buy a rechargeable because that was cheaper than buying the recharger and everything. But I've got it running on a battery pack. Pretty cool, eh? It's one of those booster packs from Costco. 
It's also a wireless phone charger. I didn't know that until I've had it for a couple years and just figured that out in the last six months. It charges wirelessly, but that thing will charge your phone a bunch of times and it's running this thing awesome. So I'm happy with that. We got it portable without the expensive batteries, but let's slow this thing down a bit. Have a good look. But yeah, guys, I feel really bad about this because this is a lot better quality than... Like I just said, it was a piece of crap. And if you like this car, I think you should go for it because it's inexpensive and it looks good. Just a nice go around the paint. There's no paint rash either, by the way, guys. Not a speck. Perfect paint. Okay, I've just zoomed in on the doors just to show you those details, guys. Now, what they could have improved on is the steering wheel i think the spokes painting them orange but maybe or not orange chrome like if i had a chrome paint pen you know what i'm saying and also those gauges the gauge cluster i think if they used even stickers like the way the maestro does it would have popped it's not horrible they got the gear shift right and they do have it looks like a black face on the gauge cluster so my bad i do see some numbers so i take that back the seats are that type of plastic that looks like textured leather so that's kind of cool and they do move here's a look at the buck guys i think they did a good job on the uh back of it as well just showing you guys over from the uh, American side here. Zoom in. I've definitely seen a lot worse than this from a lot of more expensive models. Even look at the top of the dashboard even. It's got like the uh, heater vents. Come around to the front here, jog it around. Oh, we got a... See, to save power, if it's out of use, the battery pack turns off on its own. Well, let it go around again and stop it. Perfect. So, here, actually, you know what? I gotta, that hood's kind of tough to get up. There we go, guys. So, what I do like about the hood... Once it's up, it's up. But definitely not horrible. The master cylinder in the back is chrome. They did put some details on the battery. I've seen expensive cars that they didn't even paint the battery terminals. Ertl even, one of my favorites I've seen batteries that don't have the terminals. And then I like right here, it says Plymouth if you notice. Got the orange marker lights, which really stand out. A lot of uh, companies wouldn't have bothered with those. Definitely looks good sitting there. And I'm not a fan of yellow, by the way, guys. Glenn pointed that out. But I'm being unbiased with the color because the paint is perfect. I like the way it sits, the quality of it. Like basically, it's a really good quality build. It's just kind of a plain car, it's a stock car. But that's how it's supposed to be. And I was comparing apples with oranges before because of what I'm used to unboxing here at the Cowie Diecast Museum. But I couldn't leave that the way it was, guys, telling you guys this thing sucked. I had to set that straight. How do I know it sucks? I never unboxed it. I was looking at pictures on Marketplace and stuff, right? Fleeting look of the 1969 383 Plymouth Barracuda by Road Legends. Well, there you have it, guys. Road Legends, one of 18, 1969 Plymouth Barracuda. Um, I was trying to look up information, and that's how I found all the colored ones, guys, for you. Check this thing out. 
I would take one in that color for sure. The red one's nice, the purple one's nice, but that green, woo, I like that. So two updates before we sign off, guys. One, the 1 of 18 scale Back to the Future DeLorean, still on route from China. Should be here any day now, and we get stuff over weekends and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if this shows up this weekend, even though it's, um, or if it moves this weekend, even though it's Easter weekend here. Trying to get the car for you guys. There we go. And other update, you know how I've been having to upload my videos on a little bit lower resolution due to the fact that my phone is getting full from all the videos despite me deleting them all. I've got a ton of pictures. Um, I ordered that little thing so I can delete all my pictures off my phone. Basically, I'm going to empty my phone and only keep my editing stuff on my phone. That way it's quick, easy, ready. Um, that thing has already been handed off to a local delivery company. So I'll have that anytime. So the lower resolution videos, kiss them goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Well, you know what time it is, guys. So don't forget, ODA show on Saturday. That will be March the 20, March 30th. March 30th, 2024, Knights of Columbus in Hamilton. We hope to see you there. If you see me there, come say hello. Um, the memory thing, so we don't have to have low resolution videos. I'll be here any day. Keep an eye on my YouTube community. You know, the feed, the wall. I don't know what it's called, like where I put updates, type updates. Keep your eye on that because it doesn't matter if it's four in the morning. If I check the tracking and if I got an update, I'm updating. I'm putting a post there to let you guys know. So keep an eye on that. Also, there's a toy show tomorrow at Michelangelo's up on the mountain here, Upper Ottawa in Hamilton. Not die cast, it's a mixed show. There's some die cast there, but there's a bit of everything. I might go up there if I'm not busy. I don't know. I might, might not. Definitely going to ODA Saturday though. And I'm going to bring you guys along and get some footage. So, uh, you know what I'm going to say, guys. Thank you so much for watching and all the love and all the support. We're almost at a thousand. Don't forget, when we hit a 1,000, we're doing a big giveaway, and it's going to be something cool. Um, so don't forget to smash like for me, guys. Smash like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your buddies. And as always, happy hunting.